I just had a great workout and now it's time to react y'all what's good vision gang you already know what it is this is your boy division and i'm back again with another mma reaction today we reacting to nate diaz brutal career ufc fighter documentary the video is by clenched teeth y'all y'all know i like the clenched teeth videos the documentaries be fire i'm really liking them y'all uh definitely Definitely excited about this one. Nick Diaz was a beast, and I was really, really happy I reacted to him. And now it's time for little bro Nate. Most of y'all know who he is already. I don't need to explain much. I don't really know much. I just know the man is a legend in my eyes. Beat Conor McGregor, and I'm just ready to react. So let's go ahead and get this thing started, y'all. Recently, many UFC fans have likely been typing Nate Diaz next fight in yes, their sir. MMA Google yes, searches, sir. wondering when the popular fighter will compete again. Nate Diaz is, it frustrates the shit out of me that he's not fighting. Why is that? Because I like to see him. I want to see him get in there. I want to see him make money while he can too. With just one bout. Why is Nate not fighting right now? Somebody want to explain that down below. I'd appreciate it. Left on his contract. A booking for what could be his final appearance in the octagon could come any day. Nate Diaz is one of the biggest names in all of MMA. Hell yeah. You know what's the real fight and what's the real money fight is me. Shut your fucking mouth, you'll do nothing. You'll do fucking nothing. Not one of you will do nothing. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. That's all right. Hey, hey, hey. Get the fuck out here. really understand Nate and how he achieved his legendary status in the brutal industry of combat sports. You must first understand where he comes from. Follow my instructions. Stockton. Stockton. Cut, cut, if you wish, let's do this. So I almost said Compton. Ado, Man, from Stockton. Let's begin. Nate this was born good. Nathan Donald Diaz like the graphics on stuff. April 16, 1985 in Stockton, California. He's the little brother of Nick Diaz. Where you at, George? Who's also a successful professional fighter in his own right. Diaz waiting for Evil D to step in. The neighborhood which Nate grew up in was a rough one. Violence was the order of the day. Even though he was only a kid and he hadn't seen much of the world yet, he was not stupid and observed things. Yeah. especially the rife fighting and shootings between gangs, which he knew were not supposed to be a normal thing. Another abnormality that Nate became aware of was the fact that his family was extremely poor. It was easy to tell that other people had nice stuff, yeah. big houses and clean clothes. His family, instead, would often struggle just to find their next meal. Wow, that's wild. After all, the city beginnings. of Stockton became one of the largest U.S. cities to ever declare bankruptcy. If there is a way to summarize the lasting effect his hometown has had on Nate, it's that it taught him this. No one will come to rescue you. You gotta fight your way out of your own hell and save yourself. That might sound like an obvious lesson. One that doesn't necessarily require growing up in Not Stockton really. to figure out. Yeah. And yet, most people still haven't learned it. Yeah, exactly. Like Nate grew up in a small, one-story house in Lodi, just north of Stockton. However, the Diaz family just did enough to barely make it through until the kids attended high school. By the time he was in his early teens, like most kids that age, Nate didn't pay much attention in class. Studying wasn't really his thing. Food was much more interesting. Food. So when him and his brother found out that a local gym was offering free burritos as a marketing ploy, they quickly joined. The guys at the gym offered them free burritos every time they trained with them. This slowly became a habit, and they eventually went on to become jiu-jitsu experts. So they learn BJJ to get burritos. That is wild, like crazy. It's pretty ironic that of all things, Every day it was hunger for burritos to kickstart the Diaz brothers fighting That careers. is, 
man, that makes me. This wasn't simple. This is the type of shit that makes me appreciate my own life so, so much more, man. Like, I come from a place that a lot of people grew up rough, but I was kind of like in a different situation than a lot of people. So, yeah, I am so appreciative of what my parents did to put themselves into a position to give me the life I had because I couldn't imagine joining BJJ for burritos. That's I can't imagine doing anything that I didn't really want to do for food. And that was their reality. that They were doing these things to survive. They, they weren't doing BJJ to learn to fight. They were doing that shit to learn to to learn to to survive to get food to eat <laughs> dang a hobby to them the prospect of becoming professional fighters seemed like the one thing that could one day save them from a life of poverty feel confident your taxes are done right with TurboTax live experts One. so they both started saying yes to any offer they received to fight for food or money That young Nate. The first semi-professional fight of Nate that was recorded on camera was a bare-knuckle match against Robert Lemon on July 20, 2002. You can recognize the scrawny teenager in the footage going all in. Armbar! Got him! He was only 17 at the time. And only a couple of years later, he would sign with World Extreme Cage Fighting. His official debut was on October 21, 2004. He faced Alejandro Garcia and won the match in the third round, thanks to a triangle choke submission. Definitely in used the BJJ a lot early on. He represented on. the United States at the Pan American Jiu Jitsu Championships. Nice. Where he, he was representing the USA and got silver. But then he suffered his first career defeat against Koji Ohishi at Pancrase 2005. Neo Blood turned. Whoa, Pancrase was still going on in 2005? I might need to find like a Pancrase documentary or something because the Bass Rootin documentary definitely got me wondering and interested in Pancrase. I didn't know it lasted that long. Like, hey, I got to learn about that place. At finals. He lost the fight through unanimous decision. But he balanced that out with his first TKO win, as the undercard bout at Strike Force Shamrock versus Gracie, where he knocked out Tony Juarez in the first round. Shit. Kind of wonder which Shamrock and which Gracie it was. He then the picked horse. Up three wins in a span of four months. He then challenged for the WEC Lightweight Championship against Hermes Franca at WEC 24. Unfortunately, he lost the match. And that would be the last event held by World Extreme Cage Fighting. That was the last event. being bought out by the UFC. Ah, the UFC bought him out. So did that, is that how he got into the UFC? From getting when the acquired? the WEC was absorbed by the UFC. During the monopolization, a chance to participate in the Ultimate Fighter Five. Ah, you got a reality show that followed no sixteen Ultimate aspiring Fighter. UFC fighters. Or did he not? In both their UFC he matches did. and in their personal lives. I love this season. <laughs> Nate was arguably the most popular contestant, due to his brash attitude, hunger for success, and his being related to Nick, who at the time was generating interest on his own with his fighting career. I want to thank uh, all, my, all my buddies, David Terrell, my little brother Nathan. The end of the show featured a tournament among the 16 fighters. Nate went through the elimination round, winning every match via submission to set up a final match against Manny Gamburian. During the finale, Diaz forced Gamburian to tap out in the second round after the latter dislocated his right shoulder following a takedown attempt. That's crazy. Nate was then crowned the winner of the Ultimate Fighter 5. Okay, so he won Ultimate the Fighter 5? Contest, he was also given a UFC contract. So, he was so did Nick or Nate debut in the UFC first? That's a good question for you guys. Somebody let me know that information. Please, I really will appreciate that. 
finally being rewarded for his own fighting skills, instead of simply being labeled as Nick's younger brother. Hey, good luck, Diaz. Hey, have a good one. You too, man. And with his UFC contract, he began building his own legacy as an MMA fighter. He immediately established his authority on the octagon with two consecutive wins, defeating both Junior Asun Sao and Alvin Robinson. Okay. He then demanded tougher opponents. He demanded and was given tougher a match opponents with Kurt Pellegrino. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds. During the second round, Nate managed to set up his triangle choke submission. As he locked up the choke, he flexed for the crowd and threw Oh, I saw that. I saw that. Before, before. Kurt eventually. Hey. Hey, he a dog for that, man. He a straight dog for that. That's dope. He a dog for that one. I don't like that guy. That was Kurt Pellegrino. Why don't you like him? Yeah, he has some history, right? Yeah, he's, he's I don't I don't like guys who clown around. He used to be on Hendo Gracie's team too and he jumped ship, so he's a traitor. <laughs> Nothing huge, but you know. My split decision. Unfortunately, Nate then picked up two straight defeats at oh, the hands man. of former Strike Force lightweight champion Clay Guida and former king of the cage welterweight champion Joe Stevenson. Both losses were via decision. After three losses in four fights, Nate considered making a permanent move up in weight to the 170 pounds weight class, stating, I really don't think I'm going to stay at 155 pounds. I don't make enough money to have to drop this much weight, so I'd like to fight at 170 and only go to 155 every once in a while. That makes sense. His main motivation wasn't simply to make more money, but to also reassess the course of his well, career. Well, it's to make your life a little bit easier. New if, and emerging if you feel like opponents. the work you're doing ain't worth the money you're making, then stop. His subsequent match saw him defeating Rory Markham with a TKO during the first round of UFC 111. And I said it backwards. If you feel like the work you're doing is worth more than the money you're making, then stop. His next fight was against former professional boxer Marcus Davis at UFC 118. Nate finished Davis after choking him unconscious with a guillotine choke submission in the final round, earning fight of the night honors. Marcus is going to go to sleep. He's He's out. It is all things seem to be back on track for Nate. Now you picked up a couple of big wins at 170. Uh, are you comfortable? Like, what are your thoughts on fighting at, one, at 170? Um, I think, it, I think it's good. Uh, I like fighting at 55, too. Uh, I just want to train and fight top guys. But then everything changed once again. When he suffered two straight losses, this time against South Korean fighter Dong Hyun Kim, followed by Rory McDonald. Wow. Oh, man, that dude must be a high-level wrestler to do that to a BJJ Truth guy told, that easily. The core issue was that Nate wasn't really a welterweight. Yeah. I mean, he went up he and weighed. He became weighed. a star in and MMA guys by following the strategy that his talented brother Nick used before him that of being a trash-talking boxer with unlimited cardio and durability few others in a cage fight can match. And his best division, up until that point in his career, had always been lightweight. Normally, moving up a weight class would mean being faster than bigger opponents. Unfortunately, he wasn't always faster or stronger than his opponents. And both Dong Hai and Kim and Rory McDonald were relatively bigger than him. This prompted him to back down to the lightweight division in 2011, where he continued to establish himself as one of the most entertaining fighters in the UFC roster. Yeah, yeah, this, this that shit right here.
In 2012, after several years of training, Nate received the coveted Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt from Cesar Gracie. Thank you, man. A lot. Yeah. Good on, brother. Good job, man. The hard way, the hard way. So okay. it's going to walk there, walk back. Everyone's giving him a slap on the stomach. Oh. 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 This came just a month before his fight with fellow Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt Jim Miller. Okay. Well, what's going to happen? Nate tends to favor boxing. During their match, Nate outboxed Miller for the majority of the first two rounds. Okay. Round what happened in round three, though? Near the end of round two, Miller shot in for a takedown, to which Nate stuffed and countered with a rolling guillotine choke. This forced Miller to tap out in four minutes and nine seconds. Wow. Of the second round. Okay. No. He tapped out a black belt. That's gotta feel good. The submission won Nate his fifth submission of the night bonus award. It was also the first time that Miller had been stopped in his MMA career. Oh wow. Dope. That's dope. That's a big thing. Nate was then scheduled to fight Benson Henderson for the UFC lightweight champions. Unfortunately, he lost the fight via unanimous decision, as it was a one-sided bout. Benson Henderson, tonight. To make things worse, damn. On May 16, 2013. Ain't that a meme? Nate was suspended by the UFC for violating the UFC code of conduct by using a homophobic slur on his Twitter page. Oh man. That's the wild. UFC expressed their disappointment, and he was eventually suspended for 90 days and fined twenty thousand dollars. In terms of the tweet words and the words you can't say, and whether or not he, the Listen, spirit of the word was this or that. I am fed up with the bullshit. And one thing that I have noticed is, money makes people fucking react real quick. You know, sorry's great. I love a sorry here and there. Sorries are always good. You know, but it's easy to say sorry. But when you gotta start forking out some cash, you start remembering a lot more, you know? And, and just so you know too, I saw a lot of things online, things being said about when I used that word. Do you think that I didn't pay in a million different ways for saying that word? The difference is, I'm actually really sorry for saying it, okay? When Nate faced Michael Johnson. Okay. After dominating Johnson in a win by unanimous decision, Oh, was Nate that like went a on heel, to give one of the heel, most heel, infamous post-fight interviews in UFC his El Dos Anjos in a match against the notorious Conor McGregor. When Rafael pulled out, the UFC had initially asked former featherweight champion Jose Aldo to step in. He declined step in again. due to lack of time to prepare for the bout. Really, I cannot hold any grudge towards him because I would not want to face me either. Because I would. Former lightweight champion and top featherweight contender Frankie Edgar also declined, Damn. citing a groin injury. Eventually, the UFC brass they had no Nate, choice. who was holidaying in Mexico at that time, and Nate immediately jumped on the opportunity, taking the fight on extremely short notice, 11 days. 11 now, days? Nate back to the 170 pound class. I'm the 145 oh pound champion, but this is at 170 pounds. But you know, they all claim they want to fight me or they want this fight but when my current opponent my previous opponent pulled out then everyone went silent so Diaz was the only one that engaged in the conversation but even then he was still looking for his ways he he wasn't happy with the money so we resolved the money issue then he said he couldn't make the weight he could only make 160 pounds we agreed to that then he came back again and said I can only make 165 pounds so then I said relax get comfortable put your feet up you can weigh in 170 pounds on the scales. The weight means no difference to me. I'm still going to slap the head off him, so I, I just need a man to show up. Clearly, Nate was the underdog heading into the match. Right? McGregor, 100%. I don't think Diaz is going to be I didn't in any know. shape. Second round. I had no idea this was a catch weight, though. So I, I feel like Nate having a weight advantage. I don't know. I, gotta watch, I really got to watch the full fight 
to understand um this kind of see if Nate's weight advantage was the reason he won or if he used this wrestling if he or if he if he really just outstruck McGregor which I feel like could probably happen at any weight because that's a skill thing so I'm not 100% sure but let me know what you guys think about that on TKO by Conor I would say McGregor's gonna win there's no way in hell that Diaz is going to beat Conor McGregor. It's as simple as that. It just ain't going to happen, you know? All them doubters. All McGregor them doubters. The most popular UFC fighter. Of all no time. Outside Damn the man. octagon. From people yes, who didn't really care that much about MMA. And that was me. That was definitely <laughs> me. And I knew who he was. Like then, then, that's McGregor why I'm like, Conor McGregor is the man. Five top opponents entered the cage with him. Before the end of the second round, all five had fallen to his mighty hands. <laughs> Through adversity and injury, against wrestlers and strikers, one thing held true in the world's most chaotic sport. If McGregor put his fists to another man, that man would fall. To McGregor, Nate Diaz was just another opponent, no different than any other man. Which is to say, he was born to be a victim of the great Conor McGregor. Follow my instructions. Touch gloves, if you wish. Let's do this. Shockingly, during their match, the unexpected happened, as it so often does in combat sports, in the form of a punch to the face. Oh. Nate's blows, it seemed, knocked the hubris out of McGregor, forcing him to shoot for a confused takedown. It and was that's there bad. That Nate delivered the coup de gras. Oh, he, he did beat him with wrestling. La Mata Leo. La Mata Leo. McGregor had reached for the stars, but landed on the unforgiving octagon mat. His future, once so bright, in that moment seemed very much in doubt. Nate's popularity, on the other hand, all of a sudden skyrocketed. He became known as one of the best submission specialists of our generation. He, he definitely cold. Definitely cold with it. A characteristic of Nate Diaz is the his second unique round stock that and slap. It has been his trademark, and he can be seen using it in almost every fight. The Stockton slap doesn't inflict much of a damage on the opponent. It's embarrassing. But it humiliates them. Exactly. And gets you just the got crowd slapped, back. bro. You got slapped like he a... He famously used it against Conor you know, McGregor during that match, adding like insult to injury. I don't know why I'll cuss like... Two seconds ago, now Nate I'm saying B word. Big after his it was win, weird. And quickly signed a massive five fight deal with the UFC that included a McGregor rematch at UFC 200. I didn't even know they had a rematch. Saying you won the lottery Did that happen? last time. You got lucky. How do you respond? Truth came out, and it's coming. The truth will be August 20th when it goes down again. <laughs> UFC 202 takes place. Saturday, August 20th, it's 202. During the press conference, Damn near 100 things escalated events ago. quickly. Crackhead SS. Shut your fucking mouth, you'll do nothing. You'll do fucking nothing. Now, what do you do nothing? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. That's all right. Hey, hey, hey. Connor. Connor, don't throw those fucking... Connor. 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 The hype for the rematch was overwhelming, with casual fans, athletes from across the sports industry, and television stations, all ensuring that this fight was going to be a game changer in the UFC industry. So, hey, I'm excited. Did this actually happen? He should have killed me when he had the chance, because now I'm back, and I'm going to kill you and your whole fucking team. You want them bitch kids. Chances are, you too were sitting in the audience or in front of your TV okay. to witness the event. They did do it again. Uh, I'm actually kind of excited right now to see who won this. This time, McGregor walked first. Diaz may not have held a title belt, but he was champion of this feud. I want you to fight hard, but fight clean. If you want to touch gloves, touch now. Good luck, you both. Oh, he heard it. oh no. Connor feels it. After 25 minutes, McGregor's hand was raised in victory. Ah. He got him in decision. I thought I'd win that fight. They can't have a motherfucker like me winning. I'm too real for this sport. 
They're going to get me out when they can, but it's all good, though. McGregor, gracious in victory, credited his rival with bringing out his best. It's a hell of a fight. He's a hell of a competitor, bro. The best in me. The bout was awarded fight of the night. When the chits were counted at fight metric, Diaz had landed 166 significant strikes. McGregor scored 164. But fights aren't scored on aggregate. They are judged round by round. Right. With effective striking and grappling the defining criteria. Vinny Vidi Vici? What does Nate that mean? has since slowed down and continued to fight, but at a lesser rate. This allowed him to both focus more on his family, as well as to properly deal with a number of injuries. Recently, he made a triumphant UFC return after three years of inactivity and destroyed former champion Anthony Pettis. Okay, good stuff, bro. But then he fought Jorge Masvidal in the main event of UFC 244 and lost via a doctor's stoppage. A doctor's stoppage, wow. Okay, that's for the BMF title. Would you like to run this fight back, Nate? Right back, right back. Let me heal up and let's go again. Much like his brother Nick, Nate likes to pressure his opponents with his never-ending cardio. In simple terms, he outboxes them with his volume striking. These punches may not hurt if they are thrown at certain intervals, but Nate throws them nonstop. And if the fight goes to Unrivaled the ground, he has cardio, his level Brazilian exactly. Jiu Jitsu black belt to help it's him. It's gonna out. be hard to stop him on the ground. Outside of the octagon, Nate has other ventures that include partnering with his brother Nick as huge advocates for cannabis. They even have a licensed line of marijuana pre rolls made by California Finest. Additionally, they run a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school. I in was, Stockton. hey, I was just wondering. I was just thinking, like, man, them two should give back to their community by teaching younger people to fight um, and get teach them discipline and all that. And they're doing it. Big shout out to them, man. Big shout out to them. Giving back to their community. The Diaz brothers regularly train there ahead of their fights. Nate Diaz will go down as one of the most accomplished fighters in UFC history. At the current record of 20 to 12, Nate's winnings have also helped his family and community, as he has amassed a net worth of $10 million. Regardless of what the future holds, you can bet that Nate will always be fighting and giving 100% at whatever challenge might come his way. Because, as he learned as a kid, no one will come to rescue you, and you gotta fight your way out of your own hell. Facts. Big yes, facts. you will lose some fights. You but not you win them all. Always gotta get back up. Yes, you and do. Finish the match. Never give up. Good shit, man. I love that one. Love it. I, I. That was Nate Diaz' brutal UFC career, y'all. Big shout out to Clinch Teeth. That was a beautiful documentary. Like the Nate and Nick definitely, definitely had a tough, tough life growing up, but. It's just, it's a, such a happy story seeing them see success. And then at the end, like finding out they are giving back to Stockton and trying to help the youth of that city. Uh, not even probably just youth, but adults, anybody who wants to learn BJJ, um, they're giving back. And it's kind of crazy because that uh, gym is the reason, giving away free food is the reason they have all their success. So I just feel like it's really cool to see them do that, to do that 360 and um, be right there where they started at at the end and I think that's really dope you guys you guys you guys if you're still here this long into the video but you're not subscribed to the channel what are you doing you might as well join vision gang because you kick it with us a whole lot if you watching the videos this long and you're not subscribed to the channel you might as well go ahead hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell while you're at it too so you can be first to see the videos and after you do that go ahead and jab that like button send this video straight to the moon and as always you guys be safe give it your all and whatever you're doing in life and i'm gonna see you guys next time because i'm your boy the vision and i'm out peace i got the vision i got the vision i got the vision
I had to leave my haters in the past. Told them good red. Told them good red. I don't have to prove that I cannot lose. They know that I win. Know that I win. I don't have to prove that I got the juice. They know that I'm tripping. Know that I'm tripping. And I am not finished. I am not finished. Cause I got the vision. I got the vision.